our services in this wonderful building for this new year. Yay! Exactly, we should sound like that now. You know what, it's so wonderful to be in our own space, worshipping, communing with each other. You know what, I love hugging people. It was so nice to be giving hugs and high fives to people this morning. You all look beautiful. Everybody is dressed up and made an effort, which is wonderful. Just to say, please, we want everybody to have a wonderful time this morning. We want to be rejoicing and praising God this morning as our first service. We want to start as we mean to go on for the rest of the year. So I'd now like to welcome Buzzwin and the worship team. Please stand for worship. Amen, amen. Come on, let's just lift our hands and thank God for what he has done and what he is doing at this moment. Amen. Come on, raise your voices. Raise your voices because he is good. His mercy is enduring forever. Come on, make some noise with the music. Make some noise with everything that we have. Oh come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God, our Maker. For He is our God, and we are His people, the people of His pasture. You know, sometimes we always say, a new level, a new devil. Amen? We are in a new level, but there is no new devil. The devil is the same. The same tricks over and over again, but God has it all in control. Amen? Come on, put your hands together.
Shelly, I'm going to do just a small solo before she starts. And um, please, encourage her. She's now Amen. starting and she's now part of our team. So please give her that encouragement. Let's, let's hear you with your big round of
Trinity to be able to come and meet in person. You know, for, 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 for two years, we've been really like preaching online, you know, preaching to people you can't see. But at least I can see you. I get that encouragement already, even before preaching. So I really want to thank you all for coming. You know, there's no such joy as, you know, to be able to be amongst people you love. You know, amongst your family, you know, I'm, I'm looking at everyone here. I really appreciate you all. You know, I won't even, you know, like, you know, pick you by names, everybody. But I'm really so encouraged that, you know, you are here. You have made it to our service. You know, we've got our lovely friends from Colville. You know, the, we've got the, the big saint is in the house, you know. I know the, the, young, the, the young generation will know what I'm talking about. So saint, his brother, is in the village. <laughs> so we really want to thank you for coming down. Um, it's a wonderful thing. Um, we just want really to give a big shout out to uh, Pastor David Hind, you know, of uh, One Center. For, uh, Maybe some people might not know, but Pastor David Hind and Sue, uh, they are the pastors of this church, which was known as Trinity Church, but now they have amalgamated with all nations to be uh, called One Church. So they are now called One Church, and you know, by the grace of God, they have allowed us to come in here. So we want to really thank them. Wonderful. That, that's amazing. We thank God for this mighty door that has been opened. Mm -hmm. You know, we really give gr glory to him because it's only God who can do this. Oh, only God, you know, you would have never dreamt we could be in this building. But here we are by the grace of God. 
Right. Shall we just go into the Word of God this morning? I know we are slightly behind time, uh, but you know, I'm sure it's expected as a first day trying to get everything in place. But um, yeah, we want to go in the Word of God this morning where we are going to find our assignment for today. How many people like assignments? Yes. <laughs> our assignment today, it will be in the book of Exodus. Uh, I'll be reading from chapter 14, uh, verse 15 to 16, and then I'll jump to verse 21 to 22. Just to give you a little bit of our background, uh, we are finding the children of Israel. Uh, they are now at Pi Hiroth, uh, between Migo and the Red Sea. So they are just before the Red Sea. Yeah, They are just before the Red Sea. They've just come out of Egypt, you know, God had miraculously, you know, taken them out of Egypt. I'm sure if you're a Christian, you remember the seven plagues that happened with Pharaoh, you know, some included blood, you know, some included frogs and all that. I'm sure you will remember all those things if you're, you are a believer. So here they are. Now they are just before the Red Sea. The Lord, by his making, you know, it's God who directs our path. Amen. It's God who directs our ways if we trust him, Amen. if we walk with him. So God leading them through, you know, his servants. Here they are now, just before the Red Sea. And shall we go with me then to uh, Exodus 14? I'll read. It says, then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. Pick up your staff and raise, uh, raise your hand over the sea. Divide the water so the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea and uh, on dry ground. Going to verse 21, it says, Then Moses raised his hand. Over the sea, and the Lord opened the path through the water with a strong east wind. The wind blew all that night, turning the, uh, the seabed into dry land. So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground with walls of water on each side. Shall we just pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we invite you, Lord, to speak amongst us this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, you have given me this word. I pray, Lord, that it will find a place in our hearts this morning as we listen to you. Spirit of the living God, I pray right now. That, Lord, you touch us. Be on us, Father. That the enemy will not snatch, snatch this word yeah. off us, oh God. But, Lord, that we will hear what you want to say to us. In the name of Jesus. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. You know, the purpose of my message today is to convey the significance of this moment. Or should I say of this occasion. As we, you know, us as the redeemed worship center, you know, we, I just want to sort of convey the significance of what we, what's happening now, what God is doing. You know, God has given us an opportunity to be in this place. God has opened the door for us to be in this place. You know, I want to seize this opportunity that I believe is our time to get moving. It's our time to get moving. So Moses goes on to God. He's praying. He's praying when the Pharaoh and his army are coming down. You know, everybody is in trouble. They are all panicking. Oh, they can see themselves dead because they can see Pharaoh is on them. Then he goes to the Lord, which is what we should do. You know, in our situation, when we were online, 
we were going before the Lord, praying for a building, praying for this opportunity, praying for God to open a door. Moses goes to pray to God, praying for a situation similar to what we are doing now. But do you know what God said? He said, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. So that's my sermon title today, Time to Get Moving. Amen. Say time to get moving. time to get moving. I believe it's our time now to get moving. You know, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, you know, the King James Version says, this is Paul, he says, for a great and effective door has opened to me. And there are many adversaries. You know, Paul is saying an opportunity to minister the word of God. He was saying that opportunity to minister in Ephesus where he was. You know, that opportunity was there, was manifested. He said, because of this opportunity, I will stay a bit longer. He says, I will stay a bit longer until Pentecost. He's saying he's going to tell it why? Because he is seeing what the Lord is doing. The door that God has opened. I don't know if somebody can see what the Lord is doing today. I don't know if you can see what the Lord is doing amongst us. When Paul had this opportunity, he said, I won't go. I will tarry here for a bit and make sure I preach the gospel. Because it was looking good. It was like, a, you know, I can give a picture of like a, a fisherman. He is fishing. You know when you are fishing, I don't know if we have got any fishermen in the house. You know, I, I, I used to go with people. I, I, I wouldn't call myself really a fisherman, but I would go with people sometimes who, you know, who are fishermen. And they will go, sometimes they try places. If they see that, you know, the fish is not biting in this area, they will go to another place. But when they arrive at a place where, you know, the fish are biting, they will stay longer. Paul is faced with such a situation when he's at Ephesus. He's saying, wow, wow, the Lord is doing great things in this place. I will stay here a bit longer. I'm saying the same thing, the Redeemed Worship Center. The Lord has been good to us. You know, the door has been opened. Let's get moving. Amen. Let's get moving. Because the door is open for us. I've got just a few points for you to note, you know, especially looking at the situation of the children of Israel. You know, allow me to say prayer has got its own time, right? Prayer is vital in our lives. Again, don't hear what I'm not saying, right? Prayer is vital in our life. It should take a vital place in our lives. But there is also time for action. Amen. There is also time for action. Amen. I'm saying this is time for action as the redeemed worship center. God says to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Don't cry. Get the people to move. It's time to move. It's time to start moving. So redeemed worship center. It's our time to move. Amen. Amen. This is a beautiful building. Amen. Wonderful place. I mean, look at all those, that space at the back. Look at all these empty chairs. You know, the work is in our hands. Yes. We can fill this up. Yes. We can go out there and bring them to the house of God. Amen. The door is open. It's time to get moving. Don't keep praying. And I'm not saying don't pray. <laughs> Hear me well. Don't stay on the chair and pray. God bring people. Hey, God bring. It's time to go out there and compel them to come to the house of God. It's not, there's nothing impossible before God. Amen. We can do this. I mean, I just want you to say to the person next you say, we can do this. You know, we can do this. God is able. You know, we don't do it by our own making. We don't do it by our own might. It's not by our own wisdom. But it's by the grace of God. 
You know, the same God who has opened this door for us, yes. He will go before us. Yes. You know, even before you speak to that person you are thinking about in your mind now, before you even go there, God will go before you. Amen. I like it when Moses said, we don't want to go, Lord. We don't even want to move if your presence is not going to go with us. You know, I believe that God has brought us to this place and he is going to go with us. But the devil won't let go. The devil won't let go. Verse 9 of the same chapter that we have been reading, it says, the Egyptians chased after them with all the forces in Pharaoh's army, all his horses and chariots, his charioteers and his troops, the, the whole army, 600 of the best chariots, they were there, wanted to take them back. You know what? The enemy is not happy to see this happening. He will come in full force. He will come through different ways, trying to drag you backwards. But let me tell you, as long as you have faith in God, the Bible says in Psalms 34 verse 7, the angel of the Lord and comes around those who fear him. And he delivers them all. You know, God is going to be with us. Amen. God is with us when we build his work. Amen. Think about it this way. If somebody was writing a Bible, do you know, it's easy when we read the word of God, when we read the Bible, and look at the situation and say, wow, wow. You know, look at what Paul did. When he was presented by the, by, by, by the, when the opportunity was there for him, when the Lord presented that door for him, do you know what he said? I won't go anywhere. I will stay here and continue to work. Fast forward to our generation. If this was being written in the Bible, then the Lord provided a building for the redeemed worship Amen. center. And the door was open. Hallelujah. And what did we do? I want to challenge you. This is the same opportunity like Paul, similar to what Paul had. Paul had this situation and he preached the gospel. Yes. We have this situation now. My word to you today is let's get moving. Amen. Let's preach the gospel. Let's look back. I don't know whether it will be three months or it will be six months. Or oh, I don't know how long, or seven months, who we'll look back and see this place full and say, wow, Amen. see what the Lord has done. Amen. We will tarry a bit longer. We will stay a bit longer because God is with us. You know, the devil is always trying to fight. He tries to, to, to pull you away from the will of God. Yes. The Israelites panicked. I don't know what you do when you panic. You've got to be careful what you do when you panic. When you find yourself between a rock and a hard place. So they say, what do you do? Moses went to the Lord. He went to the Lord. But the Israelites didn't even go to the Lord. They, they, they didn't think about the Lord. They were so much afraid. The Israelites were shaken. By the sight of the rapidly approaching chariots and Pharaoh and his men, they were terrified. They were terrified. But let me tell you, the Bible says in Psalms 34, verse 17 to 19, the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. You know when you, are, when you find yourself in a situation, when you find yourself panicking, I want to urge you to cry out to God. Cry out for he listens. The Bible tells us his eyes are upon his children. His ears are ready to listen. So when you find yourself in a situation, I want you to cry out to the Lord. Moses cried out to the Lord. And you know what? God saw them through. Psalm 34 verse 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. 
I don't know what's your situation today. You could be broken in heart. You could be broken hearted. I don't know what situation. Do you know what? In life, we go through different times. Even when we got saved, you know, God never said our, 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 our road in Christianity is going to be like a bed of roses. Sometimes we will go up, but sometimes we will find ourselves down. There will be times where we will be cheering and glorifying God with that mountaintop experience. All going well. But let me assure you, even those valley times will come. Yes. You will find yourself sitting down in the valley. True. So I want to encourage you, when you get to that situation, Moses saw the Lord. Amen. It might be your studies at school. It might be your GCSEs your, or your A-levels or whatever stage, your, 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 your uni work. Or, you know, when you find yourself in a situation, I want to encourage you. He listens. Amen. He sees. Amen. You know, one thing I like about God, he is no favoritism. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He knows you by name. Yes. He knows you. You know, sometimes some people might have even difficult names. Do you know what? That name is not difficult with God. Amen. God knows you by name. Amen. Do you remember in the Bible when he was walking and Zacchaeus was up in the tree? Because he was so short, he thought, okay, I, I can't see when this big man is going to pass by. I'd rather climb up a tree so I can see Jesus. When Jesus passed by, he didn't say, excuse me, say, what's your name? He said, Zacchaeus, yes. come down. Yes. Today, yes. I will have some food with you in your house. God knows your name. Amen. God knows your name. Amen. We are here because God has opened this door. Yes. God knows us. We're not taking God by, by surprise. You know, the redeemed worship said he's not taking God by surprise. But let me remind you, you also need faith to walk in the way that the Lord is open. You will need faith to walk in the blessings of God. Because there is always the enemy who doesn't want you to do well. Who doesn't want to see you doing well. You need to have faith. Faith to walk in the blessings of God. Amen. God has blessed us with this flesh. Yes. We are going to walk by faith. Yes. Amen. Not by might nor by power. Yes. But by Him. Yes. We will walk. He is already before us. He, is already, he knows what's laying ahead. Yes. All what we need is to call on Him. Amen. I want to take you to Abraham, who was also called by God. You know, if you go with me, I don't know what gadget you are using, or oh, you're using an old Bible. I've got my Bible there. But uh, for the sake of time, uh, I'll just read from here. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 12. I'll read quickly from verse 1 to 9. It says, The Lord has said to Abraham, Leave. Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. Do you know, Abraham is being called of God, as we are being called today, as God has just opened the door today. God says, go to a land which I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. Amen. Do you know the word for the Lord for you today? Redeemed Worship Center. God is saying, I will make you into a great nation. Amen. He's saying, I will bless you and make you famous. And you will be a blessing to others. Amen. Verse 3 says, I will bless those who bless you. God is going to bless those who are blessing us. The Trinity Life Church, the one church, one center. Here we are. God will remember. God will remember. He's going to bless us. And he's going to bless them. He says, I will bless those who bless you. And curse those who, who treat you with contempt. 
All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham departed. Do you know, I like Abraham. He's not asking God questions. He's not, do, you know, do you know when you're going with God, sometimes planning doesn't work. When you're going with God, you, you just have to have faith in him. Because he has got the plans. And how, why God, you know, the way God makes so interesting is that he doesn't give you the whole thing. I don't know what's going to happen two months from now. I have no idea what this church will be in six months to come. You know, God will show you one step. He has opened the door. He doesn't tell you what's coming around the corner. You know, great things are around the corner, but he won't say. He says to Abraham, depart. And Abraham just departed as the Lord had instructed. And Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haran. I don't know if there's anyone who's 75 years here. You know, I don't know if there's, if there's anyone that old here. I don't think so. But no age is too late. Amen. No age is too late. God is saying at 75, go, depart. Go. I've got a mission with you. At 75, he took his wife. Sarai, his nephew Lord, and all his world, his livestock, and all, he took everything. Do you know when you are working with God, you want to fully trust him. Don't, 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 don't leave some other things behind. Don't think, I'm, maybe I'm in, maybe I'm out, I'm out. Don't be one leg in, one leg out. You know, come fully, throw yourself full, and you will see the greatness of God. Amen. Throw your whole self in. And you see what God can do. Abraham took all, all his wealth. He took everything because he, he didn't know when he was going to come back. He didn't know whether he was going to come back, but he's following the direction that God is taking him. God is taking us on a journey, church. Amen. It's time to get moving. Amen. I don't know when this time has found you, where this time has found you. Maybe it found you when you were just being saved because we've been preaching, we've been sharing that. Maybe it's still early days for you. But God is saying it's time to move. Amen. It's time to, maybe you have been with us for, for almost, this is our third year now as a church. Maybe you have been with us from the start. God is saying he has opened the door. Now it's time to move. Let's get moving. Let's get moving the redeemed worship center and we'll see the greatness of God. Amen. Do you know when we walk with the God, it's not that everything will go well, but God will allow situations. He will allow situations so he can see, so you can prove how much you love him. You know, we want to be victors, yeah? We want to be victorious in every situation. But if there is no situation, can we be victors? You know, God will allow things in the way, but he has already given us power to go over it. But he will allow those situations to come. I don't know what situation you are facing today. It could be a marriage situation. I don't know, it could be a work situation. There could be somebody at work who doesn't like you. Or there could be a something, a dream that you have got. Keep on trusting God. He will reveal himself. You know, God wants us to throw ourselves fully into it. Do you know one thing that, is, <laughs> that people do not realize? People who blame God for not doing things. People who blame God for not answering their prayers, but they don't want to throw themselves whole into it. They want to go halfway. If I'm going to give, I'll give just a little bit. If I'm going to go to church, I'll go some, some other weeks. No, I won't go every Sunday. But you still want God to bless you fully. You know, how can God bless you, you know, over something you don't even, you are not even serious about yourself? How can God be serious about your, your situation or your, your, your dream when you're not even serious about it yourself? God wants us to throw in ourselves fully. Abraham went full into it. He went with the Lord. He didn't know where he was going, 
I'm sure the wife could have asked him some questions, you know. You know by the way, you know, the Bible says, oh, it's not everything that was done or that was said that is in the Bible. Right? If everything was in the Bible, the Bible would be, I don't know what, how big a size it would be. But I can imagine the wife answer asking, oh honey, where are we going? The Lord knows. God says, let's go. He will show us. You know, they're, they're asking, what, 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 what are we, to? maybe Lord says, okay, you are saying we are going here. Okay, so where are we going? God knows. God knows. But you see, when you follow God like that, when you have faith in God like that and follow him, he will reveal himself to you. He will reveal himself to you in a great way, big time. He is able. He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all that we can ever, you know, think of or imagine. God is able. So I'm talking of situations that could arise in our journey. God allowed a situation by actually, you know, talking to Abraham. And asking Abraham, this is further on now down the line, and ask him for a big thing. He asked him to sacrifice his son. If you've got a child, you, you, you understand, to kill your own child. God is asking him to sacrifice his own son. These are situations that could happen in our lives. Situations that God could allow. This is what he said to Abraham. But you know what? Abraham just followed the Lord. As the Lord is saying, Abraham just followed the Lord. He just followed the Lord through whatever situation God was calling him to. The Bible says, he said, Abraham, take your son, your only son, Yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. Again, he doesn't even know what mountain, which one. God is just saying, go. God won't show you everything. He will show you things step by step. He has opened the door for us. Here we are. We need to keep consulting him. He said, go. And the Bible says, this is Genesis chapter 22, verse 3 says, The next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood for a fire, for a burnt offering, and set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up and saw the place. Do you know what? When you move, God wants you to get moving. Yeah. When you get moving, then when Abraham moved, three days down the line, Abraham saw the place. God was not going to show him that place when you are still down there. There's so much that God has got for us Amen. as a church, but we need to move. We need to move. It's time for us to move. Amen. You know when the children of Israel were following, you know, the, the leading of the Lord, you know, it was said it was the cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Do you know, that cloud or that fire was not moving all the time. It would move and stop at some point. I don't know for how long, but only when the cloud start moving, they would signal to everybody, yes, we are not going, let's go. So you just need to follow the Lord. Amen. When God says, get moving, you know, if some of the Israelites would, you know, prefer to stay, oh, why moving? You know, we've just been moving yesterday. We've been walking yesterday. No, we stay. If they would have, they would have stayed behind and they would have not seen the greatness of God ahead. You know, you will stay behind. If you stand behind, you won't see the great things that the Lord is doing. I mean, the good thing is God will do what he wants to do. Yes. You know, God will do what he wants to do with those who are willing to call. Yes. If he says it's time to move, if you follow him, you will see great things. Abraham moved 
without knowing, but he trusted God. On the third day, I can see him first day, probably you were starting to have questions. It's a moving, but I don't know where I'm going. I'm going, but I don't know where I'm going. You know, he's just going. He's just going. Second day comes round. He's going. What's happening? Where are we going? I don't know if they were asking more and more questions. Maybe with us more and more. I, I sure God called you. Are you sure God told you to come? Are you sure? You know, there could have been all sorts of questions. But I like Abraham because he's trusted God. He kept moving. He kept moving. And on the third day, the Lord answered. He showed him the place. He saw him the place at a distance. When he saw the place at a distance, do you know what he said? He said to his two servants, you guys stay here. Me and my son, me and Isaac, we are going to go up there to worship the Lord. Amen. And we'll come back and be with you. Sometimes some people, don't drag them with you. Amen. Some people are not supposed to be going where you are going. Some people might not be able. Some people are okay to move us for to move with us for a while. Maybe they've done their part. But if you are still here, God wants you here. Let's get moving. Amen. And we'll see the greatness of God. Amen. The servants stay there. And Abraham went. I'm sure most of us would know if you're a Christian, you would know the story. Isaac is saying. We, 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 we have got the wood. You know, we have got the knife, dad. We have got all that. I, I can, are you sure you have not forgotten something? Are, are you sure you are not missing something? Where is the lamb? Where is the lamb? Do you know what? I love Abraham. He is my hero. He is my hero because he just went without knowing. He just trusted God on his word. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I just trust God. Honestly, I just trust God. I don't know what's going to come in three months, six months down the line. But I just trust God. Amen. Abraham just he said, God will provide, son. Amen. God will provide. Amen. And you know what? When you get moving, you will be able to see what God has laid down for you. Amen. You will be able to see what God has laid down for you. Amen. Unless you move. Children. Unless you move, if you start moving, Abraham started moving. And you know what happened? When he was about to kill his own son, because he's working from the command of the Lord. When he was about to kill his son, I'm sure most people would know this. The Lord called at him and said, stop. Now I know. Now I know. He says, do not hurt him in any way. For now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. What is it that's stopping you to worship God? Abraham did not allow even the sacrificing of his son. Some of us are being stopped by little things, minor things. When it starts raining, you can't come to church. Just because of the rain. This is England. You will stay home all year because it will rain any time. Some small things. But Abraham did not allow any situation. God says, Now I know. Verse 13 says, Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. Can you see how God provides? At the right time. Do you know if if Abraham had shown, if God had shown Abraham that, that ram in the thicket before they started, you know, he started to, to, to want to kill his son, Abraham would have suggested, oh, I can see around there. I can see God, I can see around there. Can I take that instead of but God blinds him? God makes him not to see. There's so much blessings that you are not seeing in your life, but which are there for you. There's so much that God is going to do in your life which you can't see. But at the right time, at the right place, if you keep walking and trusting God, 
if you keep going, if you get going, God will reveal. On the third day, Abraham saw the mountain. Just before he killed his son, Abraham saw that ram which was caught in the thicket. Can you see the miracles of God? You know, even that ram was quiet. You know, was quiet when, when, when Abraham was doing all these things. So that your trueness can be seen. It was quiet. It was hidden. You know, God is hiding things from you until the last time so he can see your true heart. He's opened the door. What are you going to do with this door? He wants to see your true heart. But there's so much that he is hidden. There's so much that we can't see. I wish we could see that, but there's so much. Do you know what? If we can all see you as three months down the line, was six months down the line, we could all get very encouraged because of that and just continue coming is but blessed are those who believe without seeing blessed are those is a Thomas blessed are those who have believed without seeing Abraham believed and God provided do you know what the Lord is not slack he's not slow as some people may think about slowness but at the right time at the right opportunity you know what God will provide a man in your life at the right time God will provide a job in your life at the right time you will be able to bear children at the right time you will be able to get a promotion at the right time God is going to open doors you know my word to you today keep moving just get moving. God knows what he's doing. Get moving. And God is going to show you things at the right time. Shall we bow our heads? Let's bow our heads. We are going to be praying in a minute. Let me ask you a few questions. Are you going to allow fear and unbelief to keep you from seeing the incredible or from receiving the impossible? Are you going to allow fear or unbelief? Are you going to allow your past to stop you from moving forward? Oh, you know, because I never used to go to church, but God is saying, get moving. Oh, you know, I didn't know this, but God said, get moving. You know, I don't know where we are going, yes, get moving. You just want to trust the Lord. Don't allow fear. Don't allow your past to bring you all. You know what, I have burst out. I used to be a strong Christian, but you know, over these few years, I ended up going astray. And God is saying, Go and get moving. He can do it again. He is a God of second chances. He is a God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Don't allow, you know, people, are, 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 we all want to live in our comfort zone. You know, camping out in our comfort zone is what we want to do. It's easy to settle into a life of ease. You know, don't do nothing every Sunday. Wake up, don't go anywhere. You know, you don't need to wash your clothes. You don't need to prepare this. Yeah, it can sound nice and easy. But I wonder how long. I don't know what you think. I would hate it. If I were to die and go to heaven and see, you know, how much I could have accomplished if only I trusted God. How much God did, would have laid in my life. You know, God has got great things. So as we are closing our eyes, I wonder, how long is it take going to take God to refine you and prepare you before you can get moving into your destiny? For the duration of time is determined by our submission and obedience. You know, all we need to do is to obey. Even if nobody else does. But you obey. God has got a place for you. The only thing you have got to do is to obey. When you obey God, He moves you to where you need to be. When you obey God, He reveals Himself at the right time. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 to 2, which is my last verse today. It says, Arise, Jerusalem. Let your light shine for all to see. Arise, the redeemed worship center. 
Let your light shine for all the people to see. For the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. Darkness as black as night covers all the nations of the earth. But the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. I'd like to pray. I'd like to pray. Firstly, I want to pray for those who are saying, can, can, I, can I start moving? Can I follow this Christ? I, I, I wasn't a Christian before. Maybe it's your first day today, you know, or you've just been invited by somebody. Let me, let me say, if you want to accept Jesus, the Bible says he's standing by the door. He's already ready for him. Does anyone want to commit himself to Christ? Do you want to give your life to Christ today? I want to give you this opportunity. You know, you can I won't ask you to come up front, but you can just stick your hand up wherever you are, and I'll pray for you. If you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want you to lift your hand. Or if you want to say, okay, I've heard what the Lord is saying. I want to be part of those who are moving. Lift your hand with me. I'll pray. Do you want to get moving? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you. I'm lifting my hand with those who are lifting, Lord, to say, Father, we want to move with you. We want to get moving with you. We bring ourselves before you. And we pray that your will be done. We bring ourselves before you and say, Lord, use us for your glory. Use us in this area. Let people know of our lovely God. Let people know of our incredible God. Let people know of the King of Kings in this place. We give ourselves before Him. We don't know what light was lying ahead, but Lord, we know You. As long as You are with us, we are safe. We will go with You, Lord. Go with us, Lord, as the Redeemed Worship Center. As we give ourselves to you today, Father, we acknowledge the door that you have opened and we pray that you go with us in the name of Jesus. And all God's people say, Amen.